speakers are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds empire, just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us, and someone will play for you in just a moment. From newsounds.org and the studios of WNYC in New York, it's time for another live performance in our Soundcheck podcast series. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm John Schaefer. It's kind of hard to describe uh, Katie Gately's music. It's experimental, but accessible, and full of wildly inventive sound design. For example, on her new album called Loom, you will hear the highly processed sounds of earthquakes and screaming peacocks and even her own parents' wedding. It makes for fascinating listening. And Katie Gately is here to play some songs from Loom for us today. This first one is called Allay. Try to hold a beast back, but it holds you closer. Try to hold a yeast down, but it rises, it rises faster. Miss my mother in the winter, it 
it's blue Whine about it in a room full of you Twisted my rudder, a brain turned to slew Winced at the butter, our guts spread it into glue And it's a seesaw when the river is red You got to stand tall for the forces ahead You want to rig a rope around the neck of a death thread And you want to suck a foe in the forehead till you knock them dead But I will hold your heart through this flu I'm longing for a shoulder and I'm prancing through the dew and I will hold your heart through a duel I'm gonna love like a soldier I'm gonna dance like a fool I'm gonna love like a soldier and dance like a fool I'm gonna love like a soldier and dance like a fool I'm gonna love like a soldier and dance like a fool One life and it's quite all up to you I read about it in a book so I know it might be possibly true your heart is the start of the story, the story of the only you. So never, ever let anyone tell you. Never, ever let anyone tell you. Never, ever let anyone tell you. Never, ever let That is Katie Gately live here in our studio with a song called Allay, which you will find on the new album entitled Loom, uh, an album that is full of often, uh, Katie, sounds that you would never guess what their sources were. This was, for you, a pretty transparent performance. I mean, your voice, the keyboards. People who are not watching our live stream might have wondered who the male voice was, but that was just you pitch shifted, right? Yeah. Um, I wanted to try something different with this song because it sort of has a negative, there's a negative narrator. The narrator was um, cancer. Mm. Um, and so when I got to the middle of the song, I was like, you know what? I think I want to make this kind of turn on its head and have it be kind of <laughs> jazzy and uh, <laughs> playful. <laughs> um, but um, I typically do do a lot of pitch shifting to my voice in the computer. And here I just have a kind of simple hardware pedal. It gives me one or two octaves down, which can feel very growly and fun. Right. And so the idea of cancer as the narrator of a song uh, sort of goes to the way this album came about, because I understand this was not the album you intended to make. Yeah, I was going to make a bit of a more upbeat record, um, you know, more beats and major keys. Mm -hmm, and. Mm -hmm. and I was working on a bunch of songs, and this, uh, this song called Waltz and a song called Bracer felt a little too dark for that group, and I had just been starting working on them right around this time when my mother fell ill with cancer, and I felt like, oh, I, I actually need to lean towards this darker, um, this darker vibe, and then I put all the other tracks together around those songs. And so the album is, is dedicated to your late mom. Yeah. Um, and... There is, I mean, it's it's got a dark cast to it, but it also has some unusual and kind of dark sound sources. I mean, I mentioned in introducing you, earthquakes, um, the screaming peacocks, but but also a coffin lid, 
and meat being hit, being struck. Um, are, are you f you're familiar with Scott Walker's music? Yeah, and there's a great documentary about that's right the I drift um i remember seeing that this was way before i was making music and he, he was in the studio i think he was stabbing things and he um, had like a big slab of meat <laughs> and and he, he's like pounding you know hitting it with his fists or mallets and stuff and sampling those sounds and that whole record is so stark and the the drift i mean that record right, really influenced right. me um since i heard it but i listened to it while making my record um, so yeah, you know, those sort of Foley ideas that come from film, I love it when they're used by musicians because you can get such power out of just anything lying around in your home or your studio. So do you go around constantly recording things or do you find these sounds somewhere else? I often will find sounds when I'm not looking for them. Um, like my aunt has an amazing toilet that squeals. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm giving her a shout out for you. Wow. Um, you know, which is sort of annoying and embarrassing in your house if you have a, <laughs> yes. a crazy, but to me, I'm like, please never fix it. Um, and so stuff like that you can't predict. Actually, old toilets are some of the best vocalizers. <laughs> but but see, you're you're avoiding a direct answer to my question. Are you in there in the bathroom yes. on the toilet with a recording yeah. device? Yeah, and I've been <laughs> caught in public where it was a group bathroom, and I got a, a completely appropriate look from a woman like you're nuts. <laughs> um, but you gotta chase the sounds if they're good. So yeah. Um, so, you know, some of the sounds, uh, the coffin lid, dirt being dug, are, are a little on the nose for given the, the backstory of the record. But then, uh, or they would be on the nose, except you've processed all of these things. So, you know, listening to it and even knowing in advance, okay, this is the song that has the peacocks in it. I can't always tell. I mean, and that's I can't the, either. <laughs> okay, okay. I think I forget where things are. At times. So it's, is it a way of kind of tricking or triggering the creative process? Uh, and, and then once you have that going, you can mold the sound so it actually fits what you've done? Exactly. I think often a sound just it triggers an idea for like a world or a room to be. It's very visual. So I'll hear the sound and then think, oh, that belongs in a story. Um, a song story, I guess. And and then the first thing that may have um, tripped off the whole song could end up being obscured or mm -hmm. taken out later. Um, but for the inspiration, I would say those those kinds of found sounds, are, I would say they start, 90% of my songs start with those kinds of sounds. So you mentioned uh, like Foley, like s sound design for films. Have you done that sort of work? I did it in film school because I went to school for sound for film and it was my favorite thing that we learned there. And I still do it on small projects I work on, just like in my house. I don't have a real studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you do full, you have a huge collection of ridiculous objects around your house. Um, you, I have a th Tupperware that looks like a serial killer's collection of just rubber gloves. And um, so I think Foley is real fun. Um, yeah. Well, and certainly uh, leads you in unexpected sonic directions. But there is, of course, another part of your, of your music, and that's the voice. Uh, and it's not always your voice that we hear on Loom. There are three pieces that kind of, at the beginning, middle, and end of the record, that are sort of voice as instrument um, studies. Yeah, oh. there's samples. Um, they're sort of synthesized voices from this plugin I use that lets you use these voices. And some people have thought it's my voice, which I'm flattered by because I think they're pretty voices. <laughs> they um, are. Yeah. But there is something about melding someone else's voice that my brain at least goes in different places because it doesn't feel personal. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of just throw it around. Well, and these are all uh, wordless voices, these yeah. three pieces. But, uh, you know, n neuroscientists tell us that it, it's not the, the text, it's the sound of the voice that triggers a different listening pattern in the brain. So, oh. yeah, I mean, once you use the voice doesn't matter if it's no language or a language you don't understand or a language you've spoken since birth. Something different happens to the way you listen as yeah. opposed to instrumental music. Completely. Um, I mean, instrumental music can do things that the, vo the vo vocal music can't do as well. Right. But you're right. With Once I hear a voice, there is a sense that there is a person sort of right by me, sort yeah. of singing right into my ear. Well, now, y you mentioned that um, y you started off on this other record, but you had already 
written both Bracer, which we heard a few seconds of at the top of the session, and Waltz. Yeah, Waltz I had started, and Bracer too, they weren't done. And okay. I actually had the luck of performing versions of them that were quite not completed um, for my mom um, mm -hmm. before she passed because she was able to see me play. So, um, yeah, the way they are now is pretty different. Um, the endings got kind of more fully developed. Well, and, and Waltz is, I mean, it is in 3-4 time, but it's kind of a... A strange, grotesque sort of waltz, yes. uh, intentionally so. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't mean that. I mean that. No, kind that's of a compliment. A, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, you want to play it for us? Yeah, I'll just need a moment to set. A, okay, some and up. while you're doing that, uh, I will uh, remind people that Loom is the latest album from Katie Gately. And she will be performing a Loom release uh, concert, a release party concert, this Saturday night at the Knockdown Center in Queens. So that'll be uh, your next opportunity to see her rack of gear and effects and pedals and vocals in live action. Right now, Katie Gately is here with us in our new sound studio for this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. And uh, let's hear a live version of a song called Waltz.
That is Katie Gately, live in our studio, riding the calliope from hell. That is Waltz from her album called Loom. And uh, yes, a genuine waltz, but uh, full of... So, um, Katie, what, uh, when, you, when you listen just to the one, two, three, the, what is the sound that we're hearing in that? There's some sort of like crashy sound that, that provides one of the beats in the waltz rhythm. Do you remember what that is? I should. Um, <laughs> I think it's a basket being dropped. Oh, okay. Um, it's mo- there's a lot of foley. Um, there's there's things that when I originally did them, I had them sort of panned a bit funny. Mm-hmm. And then when I worked with the mixer, I worked with Jason Agel, he was like, oh, it sounds fine like that. You know, he's a very experienced mixer. And I was like, oh, it must be wrong. And he was like, no, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um so, yeah, there, it's like dry percussion of sort of dropping things and yeah. having to kind of stumble and fall about. Uh, when, if someone goes online and just searches Katie Gately, the first thing they'll see is the, the little, you know, uh, the, the little tag for your, your website, and it says Katie Gately, sound designer and music producer. Doesn't say singer, doesn't say songwriter, <laughs> sound <laughs> designer. Is that how you see what you do? I mean, I think it shows that I don't update my website enough. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah, I need to work on that. I think I have always felt some hesitation calling myself something I don't have like a degree in, which I really don't hold that standard to anyone else. Yeah, really. I mean, how many people out there (laughs) singing and song? How how many rappers have degrees in hip hop? And I know know. it's it's ridiculous, but I think because I studied sound in in school, I feel like I legitimately can call myself that and. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a singer because yeah. it's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but I also didn't study music technically formally, so I feel some respect towards people who actually did calling themselves musicians. It's it's tricky. The labeling kind of gets figured out by the press, and they tell you what you are, even if you're in denial about it. <laughs> you have to face the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're singing and you're writing songs. That would, in most people's books, make you a singer and a songwriter. <laughs> um but, you know, you're also very close. I mentioned hip hop. You're also very close in the way you use samples to the way hip hop beat makers work. I don't know if you've had any experience, you know, in that end of the, the musical spectrum. I haven't, but I've like watched tutorials of like Timbaland's like amazing production, um, like just amazing sort of hard panning of all these like little vocal sounds and stuff. He does amazing stuff that I don't think a lot of other, other people do. And when I first started teaching myself to produce, I was looking at actually a lot of hip hop producers, um, just their techniques, you know, yeah. where are they panning things? How do they treat a snare? And Well, now, and those are the types of things that, um, you know, audiophiles will, will like rush to listen to. It's like, oh, where is she panning this in the stereo field? How much high end has she rolled off of the, the cymbals and the snares? And when you listen to something on an MP3, you know, through your computer speaker, all of that stuff goes away. Is that frustrating for you as someone who works so closely with, on a granular level with sound that most people don't actually hear that? I know. You know what? I I think it isn't frustrating for me just because I know it's there and I I make music because I have 
compulsive obsessive tendency. Like I, I'm doing all this crazy work that often I know people won't hear, but I need to do it for myself. Yeah. Um, so as long as you know Apple doesn't release computers that suddenly the whole mid range is missing, which they're not doing. Um, I think that that the laptops are getting better and better sounding. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it is it is profound when you hear like a subwoofer of a song you only heard off little headphones. Or right. Right. MacBook. Yeah. Um, the the album is called Loom, and you know, given the the story of you know your mom getting this cancer diagnosis, uh, terminal cancer, there's that kind of looming specter that was hanging over her and by extension you during the making of this. But there's another meaning of Loom, and that is you know the tool that weavers use. Yes. And and you are really, I mean, we talked a little bit about the sound design, the voices. There's another thread that gets woven through, and those are the the actual instruments, which in your case are not electric guitars and electric basses and but but viola and harp and bassoon and so so where does that come from? Um, you know, I think I I like to tell my husband that I put the word poser in the word composer um, <laughs> <laughs> because I love classical music and I I just the sound of a cello just brings me to my knees but I very young realized I don't have any talent for for really playing instruments and I sort of pretend I play the keyboard but I don't have any my fingerings are insane um, I just am really drawn to those instruments how could you not be it's uh, they're so beautiful and they're designed to be so perfectly uh, resonant and beautiful um, and so when I started to be able to find samples that were pretty decent quality I thought well I process my voice I process mm -hmm coffin lids <laughs> i might as well process real instruments um and see what happens and and so this is basically all you in the studio it's not like you're getting local musicians to come in with their cellos and violas no yeah it's all me and it's all kind of like you know velcroed together um i certainly would be interested in working with other musicians but i do like i kind of like the challenge of a sample and then i pitch shift it and do all this stuff with software to get it to be the melody i need then it sounds strange and kind of twisted, and then I like that because it makes it a new instrument. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking before about uh, Scott Walker, the uh, uh, American pop star <laughs> who moved to England and became the creator of these dense, brooding soundscapes. And, you know, that, that was the yin and yang of his music, was this guy who had a natural gift for melody, but who really wanted to make something dark. And it sounds like you're kind of plowing the same furrow as, as he did. Yeah, I mean, I love people with careers like that because it shows you that we're not just interested in one kind of genre as artists. As people, any fan mm -hmm. will be like, yeah, I'm listening to Dolly Parton in the morning and then maybe some Slayer in the evening or whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's great to have kind of role models like that because I love his whole spectrum of, of work. And I think the dark is very important to navigate especially if life gets dark. Right. So uh, we're talking with Katie Gately about uh, the new album called Loom, which uh, she's performing a release show of this Saturday night at the Knockdown Center. Uh, this next song is called Flow, and does the album have a kind of narrative flow to it? Does it tell a story with these three framing devices that are sprinkled through? Yeah, I think I wanted this... You know, Ale is at the beginning, and it's narrator's cancer, and it's kind of starting this dark story. And by the end, with Flo, it's it's a sad song, but it's also the point is to keep on going. Mm -hmm. You know, and the song that follows it, which is one of those uh, vocal and sort of instrumental, but vocal pieces, is the most major. You know, has the most major key vibe. It leaves us in a very kind of ethereal and and even perhaps with a sense of resolution. You know, it leaves yeah. us in a, a, a very different place from where we've started. Yeah, that was important to me that that I didn't just make a record that was like, and it's all bad, <laughs> bye bye, <laughs> you know, like peace. Right. Um, no, because things get better, and and I've recovered from the grief of my mother's passing, and I'm alive and grateful to be here. So I'm feeling really good. All right, well, let me uh, send you down that rabbit hole again, though. And uh, <laughs> Katie Gately's going to play a song called Flow once again. The new album is called Loom from Katie Gately live here in our new sound studio on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. Just 
just as you let yourself go. I'll be a shape outside your windowsill and just as you shake your head no I'll be a pale you're forced to swallow whole said run 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 from the wall ain't got no room left in his hall I called the house of the Lord I called the house of the Lord I called the house of the Lord
Once again, Katie Gately, live in our studio. The song is called Flow from her new album, Loom, although that, Katie, is a somewhat different-sounding version of Flow from what we get on the record. Yeah. Uh, and despite the fact that you are a one-woman band here with your, your rig and your gear and your pedals, um, it's not a kind of band-in-a-box thing. You're, this is a live experience for, for us and for you, right? Yeah. I mean, that's... It's hard. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it's, it keeps it interesting. <laughs> yeah. It, I think it, it feels like a great challenge. Like, I've actually spent my whole life being really afraid of performance and um, somehow kind of forcing myself to really do it and push myself to do more than the the, the least required. Yeah, yeah. It's the best way to, like, grow your confidence, I think. Even when things go wrong, you're like, well, th- something went wrong and I was trying for more. You know? Right. Right. Now, so as you mentioned earlier, you were setting down one path sonically, making one record when life intervened and you ended up making this record instead. What has happened to those initial batches, that initial batch of songs? What's going to happen with those? I don't know. I'm at the point where I'm worried I need to like create a second artist name (laughs) because (laughs) there can be such a crazy... um, like gap between some of the styles I like to explore. I love pop music. I love really fun, bouncy music. And I want to keep doing that. But then I have stuff that really would outshoot from this record um, well, too. Uh And sometimes when you try to split the difference and do both at once, it's like, it just sounds like kind of stew. Um, Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure what I'll do next. I do want to, everything I like, I'd like to release eventually Mm -hmm. in some manner. Well, you know, I'm thinking, uh, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of Brian Eno, who, you know, made a whole bunch of really inventive pop records and then started making these abstract ambient music pieces and becoming a composer um, and sort of exploding the idea of what that word even means. But he did a record about 30 years ago called My Squelchy Life, (laughs) which he never released. Oh. Um, But... Like little drips and drabs have come out in in later. Pro- like he'll admit that, oh yeah, that that was originally from the the Squelchy Life project. And so you know these these things. I mean, and he he doesn't use a stage name. It's just Brian Eno for yeah. for all of it. So yeah, me and Brian Eno, same thing. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, well, Loom is. An unsettling experience, but uh, I mean, it's a really provocative and as I said in introducing a fascinating uh, recording to to kind of live through and I'm really grateful Katie that you were able to come in and play some of it for us live today thank you so much thank you so much for having me Katie Gately at the Knockdown Center this Saturday night this is Soundcheck